This video is brought to you by Squarespace, helping you make beautiful websites quickly and easily. A fair princess atop a high tower guarded by a dragon. Our hero, a knight driven by eternal love, must overcome perilous obstacles in order to save her. Traditional conversations about love tend to focus on courtly love, chivalry, or philosophical terms like agape, eros, or philia. But in the world of online dating apps like Tinder, Hinge and Happen, are these visions of love even possible? With 1 billion swipes a day and over 12 billion matches in the Tenderverse, you'd think people wouldn't still be asking the question, where's the love? According to philosophy professor Richard Carney, we may be living in an age of excarnation, where digital media creates an atmosphere where we obsess about the body in increasingly disembodied ways. Essentially, the problem with dating sites like Match.com and eHarmony is that they're centered on digital avatars, representations of reality that are removed from the actual corporal body. Gone are the awkward interactions like pickup lines, catcalls, and terrible mini-golf dates. Instead, dates are arranged based on an algorithm. Carney argues that, in the extreme, what we have is a love absent an actual person, where we become attracted to the simulation of a person, kind of like the movie Her. You're dating your computer? The idea behind apps like Tinder aren't radically new. They don't differ that much from a letter passed around in grade school. The difference is that instead of sending out one note, on dating sites, people send out thousands of them. And on Tinder, you can't see them scoff and then crumple up said note. Instead, people swipe and wait for a match. There's no need to be physically present for rejection. It's zero-risk matchmaking. Not having to wait for a person to call you back isn't just a convenience. It also removes the element of vulnerability from the dating equation. In his book, In Praise of Love, French theorist Alain Badiou argues that the problem with online dating apps is that they represent a risk-free love, a love that is removed from any possible rejection. Not only are people extracted from the physical presence of rejection, but there's also the belief that people can precondition love. One can filter out any unwanted traits. People are free in advance to only interact with people of a certain age, political affiliation, that have a certain food preference, hair color, prefer a particular particular video game console or have the correct favorite television show. It's sort of the weird science approach to love, where you construct your ideal mate before you ever meet. It screens out chance and randomness. There is no possibility of lovers who come from different worlds or people that work through their respective differences. In the Tinderverse, John Hughes, Freddie Prince Jr. or Patrick Dempsey movies don't have a point of reference. There's no jock that falls in love with the socially conscious art school girl with hidden beauty. That all gets weeded out in advance. Is that good or bad? It means that people tend to interact narcissistically. They swipe based on their own preconceived idea about which type of person they want to be with. Instead of being impacted by another person, narcissistic interactions are more fixated on the love of the self, on finding yourself in the other. What is erased is different. There isn't an acceptance of the ways that people are different from you. There isn't love between two. It is a love with the self and a fictitiously constructed other that erases any unwanted messiness or baggage. For about you. Love is like two musical instruments that are completely different in tone and volume, but which mysteriously converge when unified by a great musician in the same work. Love isn't about being sure of what you want in another person. It's about the radical possibility that you don't know what you want, and being open to the possibility of being changed by another person. But is that so bad? To be fair, the idea that everyone should be waiting for the Shakespearean star-crossed lover out there is idealistic and romantic at best. As as with any technology, dating apps are as good as the people that use them. They're only obstacles to love if people treat them like tools to exclude anything that challenges their notion of self. And it would be unwise to reduce love to the way you meet a person. Love is curated, percolated, and it persists in moments of contradiction, hardship, and torment. It is arduous work that endures regardless of differences and ever-present obstacles. So, dear viewer, what do you think? Have you been looking for love in all the wrong places? Or are you one perfectly angled selfie away from finding your one true sweetheart? Hello, dear viewer. Had it with dating? Why not put your energy towards something more productive, like building a beautiful website with Squarespace? Squarespace has made it easy for anyone to make a glorious website, and they're giving you 10% off your first order when you use the offer code 8-bit. With gorgeous templates and easy-to-use tools, they've made it simple to create the website you want. 
go to squarespace.com 8-bit or use the link in the description below to sign up today. You'll get a free 14-day trial and you can see for yourself. Don't forget to use the offer code 8-bit to get 10% off your order. And we're working on more great videos for you, so if you're not already a subscriber, be sure to swipe right on our profile by clicking here. You'll be taken to our channel page where you can find more episodes. And be sure to hit the subscribe button while you're there. As always, thanks for watching, beloved viewers.